Now, since one of your books is called The Hidden Tools of Comedy, can you give us a few hidden tools? Well, uh, I, I've already given you a couple. Okay. Um, we start off with, uh, with the paradigm, what I call the comedy equation. Comedy's about an ordinary guy or gal. Jackie Gleason used to call him a moak. Mm -hmm. uh, struggling against insurmountable odds without many of the required skills and tools with which to win, yet never giving up hope. Now, from that paradigm, we draw usable practical tools. The tool of winning. Comedy gives your characters the permission to win. Um, not that they're trying to be funny, but they're trying to win. Um, I do I do an exercise in in my in my workshop. I ask three people who I make sure are not performers, and I tell them that they're lawyers, and the most important court case in the in their careers began in a courthouse four blocks away five minutes ago. I tell them, I say to them, what what would uh, what what should you do to solve the problem? And they or people in the audience say they should run there. And I'll ask them, what would actors do? And they say actors would talk about it. They'd create dialogue. <laughs> so then I tell them, OK, for muscle memory, just run out the door. You're three lawyers. You're five minutes late, four blocks away. Run out the door. So they run out the door. Then I bring them each in individually and I say, OK, here's the crazy thing. For some crazy reason, you have to be the second person out the door. Don't tell the others. And I'll bring each of the three in. I'll tell them, you have to be second. I'll bring them all in. Now, these are not performers. Sure. I bring them all in and I say, most important case of the three lawyers, most important case happened starting five minutes ago, started five minutes ago in a courthouse four blocks away, go. And what will happen is they'll rush to the door and then begin this odd little dance <laughs> of of trying to trying to get through the door. And occasionally somebody will figure it out, but most often I'll have to side coach and say, I give you the permission to do what you need to do in order to win. Mm -hmm. And what I usually do is I usually pick two big guys and a tiny girl. Right, right. And at, at some point, one of the big guys gets the idea, oh, I don't have to be a gentleman, picks up the girl, throws her outside, leaves. So he can be second. <laughs> In, it's an experiment. It doesn't work the same way all the time. It doesn't work all the time. But invariably, the audience laughs. And I'll bring the people back out and I'll say, who directed that? And they'll say, no one. And I'll say to the audience, I'm sorry, directors, I'm sorry. We don't need directors. And I'll say, who wrote that scene? And they'll say, no one. Or they'll say, you did, Mr. Kaplan, because, mm -hmm. no, I said, I didn't write it. I just set up this uh, situation. Mm -hmm. What happened at the door, that was, that was you. And so I'll say, you don't need you don't need directors. You don't even need writers. You just need characters who are given the permission to do what they need to do in order to win. Because when they were doing that weird dance at the door, they weren't trying to be funny. They were simply trying to solve a problem, an unsolvable problem, as it turns out, but simply trying to solve a problem. So rather than trying to be funny, Characters are given the permission to do what they need to do in order to win, which is why when Woody Allen is arguing with some guy at, at, on a, at a movie, on a line at a movie, he's able to drag Marshall McLuhan out from behind a poster in Annie Hall to win his argument. It's brilliant. That was such a brilliant move. I love that. Be, because, you know, although now that I find out that Woody Allen is really a creepy pervert, yes, yes, yes. you know, that's unfortunately – not all the best people are, are, are great artists and yes. he happens to be one of the not great people, but, right. um, but so, so winning the idea that comedy gives you the permission to win is one of the tools, non-hero, not the, not a, a comic hero, not a fool, not a ridiculous person, but simply somebody who lacks some, if not all the essential skills and tools with which to win, um, straight line, wavy line. Most people think of comedians, uh, comics as funny people, and then they're the straight man, mm -hmm. the straight men who kind of just set the funny people up to do something funny. Right. And uh, and what what the tool of straight line wavy line does is it recognizes the fact that that's a false dynamic. 
Uh, John Cleese once said that when they started Monty Python, they thought that comedy was watching somebody do something silly. They later came to realize that comedy is watching somebody watch somebody do something silly. Watching somebody watch somebody do something silly. So that in, 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 a, uh, in a comic dynamic, you have somebody who's blind to a problem or creating the problem, like Kramer. And somebody who's struggling with the problem, but because they're a non-hero, they can't solve the problem like Jerry. So if you look at comedy, if you look at sitcoms, you're always seeing a straight line, somebody who's kind of blind to who they are or what they're doing, like Joey Mm -hmm. in Friends, and somebody who kind of notices it, but doesn't quite know exactly how to deal with it or what to say to it, like Chandler. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so you have this dynamic. Um, and, and the dynamic can switch because it's not about character. It's about focus. Who is the story about at that moment? Who's in focus? And so, so those are some of the tools in the hidden tools of comedy, along with archetypes, comic premise, metaphoric relationships, a lot of stuff. Also, so so, 280 pages of genius. So obviously, obviously, sir. Uh, now you have mentioned it a few times, but let's talk about your two books that you have out. Okay. Um, the Hidden Tools mean, of Comedy. You mean this book? Yes. And this book? Yes, those two books, yes. It's funny you should mention that. <laughs> Tell us Hello. about your, 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 your older book. is uh, um, the, the book that first came out was The Hidden Tools of Comedy, which right. is uh, done very, very well. Uh, so tell us yeah, a little bit about that. Well, like I said, it's, uh, it basically talks about the things that are not taught at AFI or USC or, or NYU, um, because people still think comedy is, well, let's do something funny, let's, let's do some gags. And it, it talks about the things that actually create, increase or decrease the comedic elements in a, in a scene um, and what you can do. Because it's not about, well, you're just born funny. It's about if you give a character skills, if you have them be a hero, you're creating a dramatic moment. And a skill could be something as simple as awareness, kind of so when a character is aware of his situation, that could depress him. Mm -hmm. That's a dramatic moment. But if a character isn't aware, is kind of blithely just going along, not realizing how screwed up they are and how hopeless their situation is, that's a comedic moment. So you can actually increase or decrease the comedic elements in a scene or the dramatic elements in a scene simply by giving or taking away skills for your character. Got it. And then now your new book, The Comedic Hero's Journey, we've kind of touched upon a lot of the and, elements and, of and that. that. And that basically uh, it, it kind of is a riff on the, on the hero's journey mm-hmm. uh, and talks about, so what happens in the comic hero's journey? What, what differences are there? What tweaks do you have to make? And how is that journey different either either in a great way or, or in a subtle way different from the dramatic hero's journey and it's it's uh as i say it's serious story structure for fabulously funny films <laughs>